the Superscaler K10 G1 FPGA Miner. This thing is awesome. I'm so excited to be cracking this thing open and taking a look at it. I had my chance to play with an FPGA miner a while back. It was that Molt Miner M2 and it was okay. But this, oh my goodness, I'm excited. There's a lot of different algorithms I'm eager to get into on this. FPGA miners have been the talk of the town recently, especially with Alethium as well as Radiant. And if you guys are like, what is an FPGA miner? This looks just like an ASIC. So it's in an ASIC chassis. You know, check this out. Pretty typical. High RPM fans on the front. Sometimes you have them on the back with these units. Mid-sized chassis here. Separate power supply to it. Control board up top here, uh, as well as hash boards here. Now, FPGA, FPGA miners, a little bit different. They're like this weird hybrid between an ASIC as and a GPU and CPU kind of take all the, the best of all worlds and combine it into one unit. So it's like an ASIC miner, you know, high RPM fans, heat, noise. However, it's more efficient, which is more like a GPU in that regard. But the nice thing is about FPGA miners is you can actually mine a variety of different coins, which make it a little bit more like a GPU. However, can't mine all of them. You need to have the bit streams for them uh, and they need to be public. And you don't necessarily have hash boards, but you have the FPGA boards here. So like, check this out. Look at all these different power cables coming in here, which is insane the amount that you need. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have three boards, 18, and then one for our control board, 19 power cables. And then take a little closer look. Do you see this here? That's an SD card. There's actually two SD cards on here. You can see one on each side. So you have two, four, and six uh, total of these SD cards with 12 chips on this unit. So it's a little bit different. And honestly, this unit has been a massive learning experience for me. So huge shout out. Got to start out here thanking today's video sponsor, Mineshop. I'll put a link to them directly down below. Sent me over the Superscaler K10 for review and testing in today's video. So let's jump over to the computer. Let's talk about all the different algorithms that this can mine, which one I'm interested in, and where we go from here. What's up, guys? Sorry to interrupt your video, but I'm excited to help announce the Ironfish and Meter Box massive giveaway event. Check this out. There is under 30 days left in this massive giveaway hosted by the Meter Box and the Ironfish team, with one of the biggest giveaway prizes being the RTX 4090. Now, how do you enter? Well, it's easy. Follow the link directly down below in the video description, come over to the giveaway, and you can see there's a variety of different methods to enter, like visiting a website, subscribing on YouTube, following on Twitter, and joining different Discord communities. Finally, there is a mega method to go ahead and enter, and that is purchasing the Ironfish box set, which gives you 1,000 additional entries. Check out this box set. It's so cool with that blue and black design. Kudos to the meter box team. When you buy one, they give you a secret code. You come right over to the giveaway, click on 1,000 additional entries, and there is a slot available for that secret code. Guys, go over, visit the link directly down below, and enter the giveaway with just under 30 days left. Good luck. So let's take a closer look at this unit because I have spent a massive amount of time today learning as much as I can about this. And man, the FPGA world is like its own little universe within crypto mining, which I think is so cool. So we're over on mine shop here. Let's go ahead and look up K10 and that's gonna find us the K10 Superscaler. Very similar to the Coal Engine P2. So let's go ahead and load this one up. It's just a little bit more expensive. Uh, it also does have a little bit better performance on a number of different algorithms. So this is for sale here. Let's swap this over on Mineshop if you guys are interested. By the end of this video, I'll leave a link directly down below. So scrolling down on their site, it does have a variety of different metrics for the different algorithms that it does support. However, I found it a little bit easier to read for you guys over on Superscaler's website. So love you, Mineshop. 
But let's jump over here to Super Scaler where we do have a dark mode. Ah. So let's go ahead up to the top to K10. And here is that unit. So right now, as of today, the bit streams that we talked about, which allow you to mine the different variety of cryptocurrencies is a lithium, Radiant, Carlson, NXL, and NTL. So you have quite a few different avenues that you can go. The nice thing is, is that Carlson is one where we're seeing a lot of different coins pop up on the Carlson hash algorithm, which means you can mine any of those on there. These are really just the algorithms. So that being said, Alethium and Radiant have been hammered recently with the network hash rate just going through the roof, which unfortunately has made the Superscalar K10, which used to do very well on both of those algorithms, not so profitable, which leads us to turn to something like Carlson hash. So the network hash rate of Alethium has really gone through the roof. And a lot of this is not necessarily due to the FPGA miners, but a pretty decent amount. If you take a look here, looking at January up through like, you know, beginning of May, you slowly see this massive increase occur. And a lot of that is due to FPGA miners. But then you see in May a massive wall. And that's when a lot of these gold shell KA boxes came online. And it's just not worth it right now to mine with the K10. We'll talk about profitability here in a minute and we can kind of see how it does. Looking at Radiant, Radiant kind of follows suit in the same avenue. However, we don't have a Radiant ASIC like we do with Alethium. And you can see in the beginning of May as well, the network hash rate go through the roof because of actually a number of FPGA mining farms that have come online. So that being said, we really have to look at what other algorithms are available for us for the Superscalar K10. And that's where Carlson really comes in. So scrolling down, we can get some metrics here. I have the G1. There's a lot of other models here, the X1 and the X and the G. So today we're gonna to focus on the G1. I don't really know all the differences. I'm still learning a lot about FPGA miners. However, we're gonna cross Alethium and RxD off the list because we're talking cents, if not anything, on a profitability per day. And we're gonna look down here at Carlson Hash. And so right now it shows on Carlson hash that we're doing about 38.88 giga hash at 1,798 watts at the wall. So let's see what that does from a profitability perspective. The Superscalar K10. Let's take a look at what it does on Carlson hash. And then I want to talk about with you guys what I plan to do with this unit. So Carlson hash here has us at a income per day of $7.35, which is pretty damn good. Especially if you got some really low electric, you could do very well with this unit. However, at 10 cents, it's using about $4.43 a day in power, putting us at a profit of $2.92. And it's like, okay, for $2.92 a day, the price point of this unit is a little hard to swallow. I totally get it. So let's take a look at hashrate.no. Because if we go over to FPJ miners and select the K10, we might be a little bit more surprised at what options we have. So we talked about Carlson here, and it's putting our profit about $2.66 a day. Nautilus down below $2.61 a day. You know, your lithium, look at that drop. 43 cents. Oh, radiant, negative $2.76. And it used to mine Caspa but now it's negative $5 a day, absolutely not worth it. But where our eyes turn is to the top. There's this brand new project out there I know nothing about. I'll be the first to mention it. However, Second TL Mining did mention this to me in Discord the other night, and I went, hmm, let me check it out. Will this K10 mine consensus network? And it looks like this is how I found it over here because it is doing today over $7 a day in profit. Revenue is over $12 a day. And I'm like, okay, I don't need to love this project to mine it and swap out of it. So Trade Ogre doesn't support CSS yet. However, Zegex does. And I haven't used Zegex a ton, but a lot of people recommended this to me in my Discord. If you're not a member, go over down below and click the link and join the Discord community. Definitely a place to come for newbies and those looking to learn a lot about crypto mining. So Zegex here, they do support Zegex to USDT. So I'm like, hmm, what if I mine with the Superscalar K10 
and I just convert to USDT a few times a day. Might be a great avenue to go. As I said, I don't need to love and believe in the CSS project. It's probably gonna come and go in the next few days and be gone, or the profitability is gonna be abysmal. So I might as well take advantage of this when I can. So I have spent an enormous amount of time watching through a YouTube video on the Superscalar K10 FPJ Miner by Motor City Mining. And he has a one hour video on how to set this unit up. And if you're like, wait, how hard could it be? Trust me, these things are super stubborn, super particular, and you don't have a fun web GUI for them. You actually end up having to download this tool, which is half of it's in Chinese, and I've had to use Google Translator to even find out what some of this stuff means. And you literally use this program to configure it. And something that I have learned brand new to FPGA mining is that there are things that you have to go ahead and burn an algorithm on. You can't just like swap algorithms. You have to take that algorithm and program it in. Remember those SD cards? Program it into the actual unit. And that has taken an hour or two sometimes to apply. So for those of you guys that are not super familiar with some of these FPGA miners, this is your PSA that if you go out and buy the Superscalar K10, good for you. It is definitely challenging to set up but it's very rewarding. I mean, ASICs have really spoiled us as crypto miners on how easy it is to plug it in, fill in a few pools and off you go. So keep that in mind if you're interested in this. However, I once again want to give a huge shout out to Motor City Mining for his video that he's put together because I wouldn't have been able to do anything with this without learning from him. So I have had an absolute blast over the last several hours learning about FPGA mining and the Superscalar K10. And if this is something that you're interested in, I highly recommend you go over and check it out at Mineshop. And I can't wait to dive into this unit more and more because it is, it is not for the faint of heart. This is a difficult unit to set up, but it is very rewarding once you actually get it mining. And the nice thing is about these is that they use below 2000 watts. So it really gives you a lot of opportunity as a home miner to use this unit. So where do we go from here? Well, I want to get this unit up and mining. I can't wait to make a future video on it, on how it performs on the different algorithms. And can I get this working on the consensus network? Because I think that would be totally badass. Quick teaser here. We did get our super scalar K10 G1 up and mining. We actually have it on consensus right now, mining away, making over $8 a day on this unit. Absolutely love it. Is on the Carlson hash algorithm, about 36 giga hash, and we're at 1,650 watts. All right, future video on it. Thanks for watching, guys.